Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, welcome. I'm Catherine. This is Peach. She probably wants some treats or something, even though I actually just fed her. Anyways, today is super highly requested, and I've been saying that I've been working on this video for a long time. I actually have been working on it, but things take a while sometimes. Today I'll be going over my current workout routine, split, whatever you want to call it. Lately, you guys have been giving me actually a lot of compliments on my channel about like how I look, which is very kind, especially since I was just looking back at videos from like pre-pandemic, and I feel like I've definitely lost some gym gains, a little higher body fat than then, but I'm still feeling good. We're still going to the gym, and that's what it's all about. As many of you probably know, I am a dental student and I do YouTube, which both could honestly take up all of my time. And I still fit in going to the gym, but I don't have time to go to the gym six, seven days a week. There was only a short period of time in my life where I went to the gym like six days a week. And that was like literally for a couple months. So I've been doing about three to four days, more like four days is like my goal at the gym per week for about like a year and a half now. I've still seen strength gains. So it definitely is possible to get results in the gym on a shorter schedule. So I wanted to share my current routine and kind of walk you through how I make my own workouts. I've never paid for like a workout plan or anything, never had a personal trainer or any of that stuff. I just kind of learn the fitness knowledge myself. And honestly, it's just not an expense that I really wanna have when I prefer to make my own workouts anyway, because then if there's an exercise I don't wanna do, I just don't do it. So I'm kind of walking through how I create my workouts, what works for me. I'm also going to be sharing with you guys some of my favorite workout apps, tools, supplements, equipment, everything that I use in my daily gym routine. None of it's necessary, but a lot of these things I'm like surprised I ever lived without them. So I just thought I would share it with you guys in case you're also looking to maybe improve your workout routine in some way. So like I said, I only go to the gym four days a week. I would love to do five days if I could, but I really just can't fit it into my schedule. But honestly, I just love going to the gym it's my own personal time. I have fun working out. If you hate your workouts, you should switch it up because I guarantee there's something out there that you're gonna like. I also love my current routine because one day I get to do deadlifts, which I absolutely love. And then the other day I get to do hip thrusts, which I also love. So there's really no loss. All of my workouts are about 50 minutes. I really never spend over an hour in the gym. Quite frankly, I don't know how people spend that long in the gym. I get in, I do like four to six exercises, maybe a couple more if I'm adding abs that day. You really don't need to spend like forever in the gym to get results. And I figured some of you guys would maybe be interested in trying my workout routine and trying what I do. So I actually created a little four week workout plan for you guys. I figured that would be the easiest way for you guys to try the kinds of workouts that I do and have it like clearly outlined instead of you like hunting through this video to figure out like exactly what to do. I'm not charging for it or anything. It's completely free because I'm not a personal trainer. This isn't my job. I just figured this would be an easy way to let some of you guys try what I do. It's a little repetitive, but it's one of my favorite workout splits that I think I've done like ever. So yeah, the link to that will also be down below. And without further ado, let's get into the routine. Super quickly before we hop into the routine, I just wanted to discuss my fitness philosophy a little bit. If what you're doing is unsustainable, it has no place in your routine. I've tried to force myself to go to the gym six, seven days a week and I physically cannot do it. It's too overwhelming for me and usually just results in me not going at all. So I found that four days is a really happy medium for me. On the topic of sustainable choices, if you see people posting about how they lost 20 pounds like all the time and they're constantly gaining it back and then claiming they lost it again, they're not living a sustainable lifestyle and you probably don't want to take advice from them. I don't do any cardio at the gym. It has no place in the gym for me. If I want to do any cardio, I'm going to go on a walk outside. If you don't like an exercise, don't do it. I have tried to do squats my entire life and they have never worked for me. So I just don't do squats anymore. And my workouts are not set in stone. They're very flexible because I don't want to get to the gym, have a super strict workout and then find that all the equipment I need at that moment is taken. I prefer to be a little flexible to kind of avoid that frustration and it kind of makes it more fun in case I want to try any new exercises. So now I'm going to go through my workout split and then I'll walk you through kind of like my daily workout routine. So if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know this, but I have four days I work out per week and two types of workouts. Both of them are full body workouts. I started doing full body workouts less than a year ago at this point. I just was really getting tired of doing leg days and my legs would just get so tired by the end that I just didn't really feel like they were very effective. And since I only do four days a week, if I do a different kind of split that I'm not doing full body, I can only hit my muscle groups once per week. And I feel like I see more results in the gym when I hit each muscle group twice a week at least. So my two types of days 
are a push full body day where I focus on chest, shoulders, tries, the typical push muscles, and then quads, plus a little bit of glutes. And then my pull full body day is back and buys, and that's where I include my deadlifts as well. All of my workouts are very focused on the compound movements because that's where you gain the most strength. I do about like one to three max compound lifts. Then I do like two to four accessory lifts. And then about once or twice a week, I do abs for a long time. I didn't train abs at all because I was quite honestly bored of them, but I've been getting back into it and I'll share what I do for abs. Just to give kind of an outline, this is how a typical week might look. Tuesday, I would do push. Thursday, I would do pull. Friday, I would do push again. And then Sunday, I would do pull again. Since I'm working such different muscle groups, I can do like two back-to-back -back days and still do full body and it's not an issue for me, but I do have a couple rest days thrown in there just because I only work out four days a week. So first I'll show you how I structure my push days. So like I said, my push full body days, I do shoulders, triceps, chest. Don't forget chest ladies very important. And then kind of quad focused leg movements. Since I do train legs every day I work out, I always do a couple little leg active stretches. These kind of movements are my go-to. Basically, I'm just trying to open up my hips a little bit and get warmed up, especially on days that I'm doing either a type of squat or a deadlift. I really need my hips to be nice and loose and open. So I always do active stretching because it's more effective to do active stretching before your workouts than static stretching. My push day accessories are my glute band. I have a single glute band that I bought several years ago and it's works. I don't go buying new ones every other day, which seems like everyone's doing. And my trusty barbell pad, because guess what exercise number one is? The main event of push day. I love hip thrusts so much. They make me feel so strong and I just love them. That is kind of the main event of my push day. Since this is kind of a heavier compound lift, I do one to two warm up sets. My first warm up set will probably have like a 45 plate on each side, so like 135 total. Then I'll add 10 to 25 on each side of that. Then currently I'm doing like 205 to 225, kind of between that range, but that's like my current max. So usually four to five sets of hip thrusts. I usually aim for 10 to 12 reps. Second exercise of the push day, I do a quad focused exercise. Since I don't do conventional barbell squats because they just hurt my back too much, I either will do a Bulgarian split squat, which are brutal. If you've never tried Bulgarian split squats, I think everyone has a love-hate relationship with them because like they're kind of the worst, but they also just burn in a good way. Or I do leg press, another exercise that makes you feel very strong because you can just leg press so much more than you think you can. I love goblet squats because I feel like my core is more engaged than a barbell squat. Then I move into either one or two upper body compound lifts. This will either be overhead press with a barbell, one of my faves, or I do chest or bench press or like one of those incline chest press machine things. I'll either do one of those or both of those. I always do lateral raises because they're the best. Sculpt out the shoulders, get a nice little lateral delt pump. I may or may not add an accessory leg movement. This would either be a cable kickback, cable abduction, or this little hip and glute thing I have at my gym that just kind of targets the side glutes. And lastly, I kind of hate arm exercises because they're just so boring and my arms tire out so quickly, but we do some triceps. Usually I do the tricep pull downs with the rope. I just feel like those target my triceps the best. And that is my typical push day. It doesn't have to happen in any sort of order, but I do always try to do my compound lifts towards the beginning of my workout. You don't want to try to do a bunch of compound lifts after you've done a lot of accessory lifts. Let's say I did some lateral raises and tricep pull downs. I don't want to go and try to do overhead press because I'm not going to be able to lift as much weight just because all my muscles are tired out. So try to do your compound lifts at the beginning when your muscles are nice and fresh and ready to go. It's hard to believe there was once a point in my life where I didn't train back because I didn't really understand it. I didn't really think it was a good thing to train. Obviously it's important to train every muscle. I don't know what I was thinking, but now back is one of my favorite things just because I feel like the back muscles are like the prettiest muscles of the body. I just, they're just so cool. On pull day, since I do my deadlifts on pull day, again, I always have to do my little active warm up. I usually do my little leg swing hip opening exercises in between my sets of my pull-ups. So I'll do a set of my pull-ups, then while I'm resting, I do my leg swings, maybe I do like 10 each side, do another set of pull-ups, do some more leg swings. So then I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone because I only give myself like 50 minutes to work out. So I have to be time efficient. So I kind of already gave it away, but the first exercise I do are my chin-ups or my pull-ups. You can totally do these assisted. For a long time I did these assisted because they are hard. I'm finally at a point where I can do them unassisted. It feels really good, feel really strong. So I have to do these at the very beginning of my workout though, because if I've already used like my back muscles or my biceps at all, I can't really do any of them. So next we move on to the main compound lift of the day. 
sumo deadlifts. I sometimes will just say deadlifts because they're the only kind of deadlift I do. I tried to do conventional deadlifts for a long time, but I have a bad back. And every time I got up to a certain weight of conventional deadlifts, I just blew my back out again. The sumo deadlifts put a little more of the strain in my legs and my glutes and a little less on my back. And it just works better for me. So I urge you to try both sumo and conventional deadlifts, see what works for you. Maybe you're lucky and you can do both, but I do love my deadlifts, such a great exercise. Then I move on to the lat pull downs. I usually take kind of a mid grip on these and they're really great for targeting those lats, obviously. Then I move on to some seated rows. Sometimes there are machines for this, but I prefer to use the cables. Then we do our one single bicep exercise of pull day because biceps are boring. And frankly, I don't really enjoy training them that much, but I gotta throw in one because pull day is back and buys. So you have to do the buys. I'll either do cable bicep curls, dumbbell curls, or barbell curls. Usually I go for dumbbell curls. In the final exercise of pull day, you can't forget the final component of pull day, which are the rear delts. So I always do my face pulls. I love face pulls. You really just feel them target those rear delts. And it's such a cool muscle. I always like rewatching my videos of face pulls because I just like them. And for my pull day accessories, I do use lifting gloves. I found myself not being able to lift very much weight in my deadlifts and on like my chin ups and everything because my hands were just tiring out really soon. And I was getting like blisters and calluses. And it wasn't so much about the appearance than it was about like the pain. And I just don't want my hands to hurt. So I just really like my gloves. Also, I am in dental school. So I like to keep my hands nice and protected. These are also from Amazon. I highly recommend them. I really like them. Mine are a size medium and your fingers are free and it's nice and open on the back. So you don't feel like really hot. They also kind of have like built in wrist support with these nice little wrist cuffs. I just move my Apple watch back like an inch and I can still have my Apple watch on while I'm using these. These are honestly a lifesaver for me on pull day. I cannot do a pull day without them. And just because of the current state of the world, this is my favorite gym mask. It never feels like it's suffocating me. Very lightweight, breathable, it stays on my face. It's from the brand Adams. I wear a size small in the mask. It had you measure from like ear to nose and that's the measurement it told me that it would be. If you're looking for a gym mask that isn't gonna suffocate you when you're like huffing and puffing, this is a good one. Since pull day usually takes me less time thin push day. I'll usually include my abs on pull day. Try to do these at least once a week. If I can, I'll do them twice. And usually I can finish them in under 10 minutes, but these are my TRX abs. Abs, frankly, can be kind of boring, especially if you're just sitting there doing crunches and planks. So I have fell in love with the TRX equipment. It is so hard, but you just feel so controlled in your core. And it really focuses more on control and stabilization elements of your core rather than crunches. The function of your core is to stabilize. So focusing on exercises, which involve core stability are usually a little more effective for training your abdominals than doing like a bunch of crunches. Usually I'll do three to four TRX exercises. My favorite and the exercise that you probably will underestimate if you ever try these are the body saws. They're actually so difficult. You just really feel your core engaging. Basically you get into a little elbow plank and shift your weight forward and back and try to keep your core in place and it's just really hard. Then I do some TRX like full plank knee crunches. They're not really crunches since you're not like crunching your core but you are are bringing your knees up and in. Sometimes I'll do some TRX little skaters, I call them. We kind of bring both knees in on one side and then go back out and then bring them in on the other side. And then to target obliques a little bit, I hold a side plank for like 15 to 20 seconds and it's pretty rough. So I usually do two to three sets of that and I do it as a circuit. So I do all of those exercises back to back, rest a little bit, and then I redo the circuit. Just to touch quickly on reps and sets, for my compound lifts, I'll do three to five sets depending on how many warm up sets I need to do. So for like my hip thrusts and my deadlifts, usually I have to do two warm up sets. So I'll do about five sets of those. For things like overhead press and bench press, usually just three to four sets. And for reps, I always aim for about eight to 12 reps. 10 is a sweet spot, but I always like to work myself until failure. So you wanna choose a weight where you can do 10 reps, but you really can't do any more than 10, but you get to 10 with good form. If you're feeling like you're getting to 10 reps and it's pretty easy and you can even maybe go to like 12 to 15, it might be time to up your weight. I do try to up my weight a a little bit as often as I can, but sometimes we hit some plateaus. I would try to push yourself to up weight if you are feeling like your workout is like not quite as challenging as it used to be. You might surprise yourself and lift more than you think you can. And now I'll walk you through what like a typical gym routine looks like for me. For most of last semester, I was going to the gym before my clinic or class that started at 9 a.m. So I wake up at 6.30, I feed the cats, get dressed. Then I make my little pre-workout. This has been my favorite pre-workout for like a year now. It's the first form project one, sour rainbow candy or I also like the candy.
candy burst one. The candy burst one tastes like Skittles. I love it. This one is like kind of like Skittles, but a little more on the sour side, but it's really not like overly sour, which is good because I don't like things like too sour. It does have beta alanine in it, which is usually the ingredient that makes your skin kind of tingly. I have been taking this one for a long time and it's never made my skin tingly. So if you hate that itchy skin feeling, this one does not give me that. I also never feel shaky or anything on this pre-workout and it just tastes really good. Pre-workout is totally not necessary for a long time. I didn't take it. I've just been liking it, especially since my workouts are in the morning. I just feel like it gives me a little extra boost, wakes me up. So I will link that one down below. Then I arrive at the gym around seven, do my workout and leave by like 7.55, eight o'clock latest. Then I come home, get ready for class and I either have my protein oats, which I've talked about for a while, or I have like a protein shake or protein smoothie. Usually if I have a shake or smoothie, I have the formula one protein. My favorite flavor to add to berry smoothies if I'm making like an actual smoothie is the magical charms. It kind of just tastes like lucky charms. That's my favorite one to add to like fruit flavored things. And if I'm just having a shake by itself, like just protein and almond milk, root beer float is the best. This has 20 grams of protein and the formula one specifically is a faster absorbing way. So I find it better for post-workout when I'm trying to get in some protein really fast, especially since usually I don't eat before I work out in the mornings just because it upsets my stomach. So I wanna get in protein quickly. Protein supplements are also totally not required in order to go to the gym. Like you don't need to be taking protein supplements. I just find them quick and easy after my workout since I don't leave myself a lot of time to get ready from going to the gym to class. I do also track all of my workouts. I always turn on my Apple watch. I have it on the strength training setting usually, but I don't really trust the amount of calories it says or anything. I just kind of find it fun to like look at my heart rate, like after like a nice heavy set of deadlifts, see how high up it goes. Cause I don't do cardio at the gym, but I also track my workouts on the strong app. So this is like totally unsponsored. And this app is literally totally free. I've been using it for years. Ian actually introduced it to me and it's just my favorite app ever. So you can have kind of preset routines and everything. But what I do is usually I just click start an empty workout. And then I add the exercises kind of as I'm doing them or if I'm like in between sets and I'm like, hmm, I wanna do lateral raises next, then I'll add in lateral raises. So you just click add exercise and then you scroll through. If there's any like recent exercises, you can just add to the top or you can search. Sometimes they don't have like every single exercise you might do. So you might have to like create your own exercise in which case they won't have like any like diagrams or anything. So I'm like, how to perform it. But to go with this concept, let's just say lateral raises. And I always do dumbbell lateral raises. You can see I've done them 91 times. And then the best part of this is when I was first starting to go to the gym, every time I hopped on a cable machine to start a new exercise, I was like, well, what was the amount of weight I did last time? I don't wanna be sitting there like trying every like five pounds of weight until I get to like a heavy enough weight for me. The Strong App actually saves what amount of weight and reps you did last time in your workout. So you don't even have to think. I'm like, mm, lateral raises, oh, 15 pounds. I'll get my 15 pound dumbbells. It also shows you the amount of reps you did last time. This is also a really good tool to see if you're gaining any strength. Am I lifting any more weight than I did last time kind of thing? So you do your first set of lateral raises. You say 15 pounds, 12 reps. Then you click a little done check mark at the side and they have an automatic rest timer. Usually I rest like a minute 30 to two minutes on my compound lifts, more like minute 30, but on my like smaller, lighter lifts. I'll usually do around a minute of rest. And sometimes you don't really know how long you're resting. So this thing tracks how long you rest and it sends a notification to your phone. When you're done with your rest, they're like, get back to work, time to do your next set. I just think this app is super helpful. It really doesn't seem like much and it helps me stay on track during my workouts and I just love it. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Hope it wasn't too long, even though I know it'll be long because all I do is talk. Like I said, my free little workout plan will be in the description below. Feel free to try it. Let me know what you think. Get on that full body workout train like me. I love full body. They're the best. They're especially good if you're on a busy schedule and you can only get to the gym a couple days a week, which that is totally fine. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.